videos, it's your boy Lion Saul, and we are here with a new series. A series that I've wanted to do, a series that I'm actually excited for. Now, before I get into this, my local to global will still be going on. But I started watching a lot of WCW in the on the on the network and everything, and I was like, I oh, mean, I wish that they didn't fold. Especially because around that time, 2000, 2001, was when I really got into wrestling. And then it left. And then I was sitting there. It's just, I've had one company to watch the entire time. So, as everyone, or I'm not sure if everyone knows, but March 2001, WCW was sold to WWF and Vince McMahon. And it left a hole in the wrestling landscape. But not everyone knows that Eric Bischoff tried to buy WCW. He had a TV deal, he had everything, and they just did not want to sign him. So, in this, we're going to take it, instead of uh, the Vince McMahon buying WCW, Eric Bischoff has bought WCW, and we are going to work from the second week of May, 2001, and on, to see if we can overtake WWF by 2017. So, let's see what's going to happen. We are going to go to, we're going to go to our home base in the southeast. Big best venue, and we're going to Mercer University Center. And we're going to start with some pre-show matches. And let's get it on. In the 25E pre-show belt, James Storm and Chris Harris defeat Matt Seidel and Roger Strong in 8 minutes. When James Storm defeats Roger Strong by pinfall with an eight-second round. Roger Strong was a weak link with a twenty with a fourteen, and Chris Harris and James Storm had twenty nines each. And then an even worse match in eighteen E minus. Alexis Lari defeats Beth Phoenix by pinfall with a I'm going to call it a DDT. They don't like women. But I want a women's division at some point. So, we're going to have to fix that. And we will. But we're going to go to the show, which everyone has come to see. In a 44D, we have the Nitro show opener with commentators Tony Schiavone, Mike Tanay, and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Because Scott Hudson, not. And as much as I... I'm a fan, and I follow Mark Madden on Twitter. I've communicated with Mark Madden before. You can't separate the professor and the brain. Like, come on. But, in a 77B, Eric Bischoff comes out and says, Ladies and gentlemen, I have bought WCW. That's right. Billionaire Ted is no longer in charge. It is the Eric Bishop show. And things are going to be different. We're not doing this new blood or this old guard BS. We're not doing politics. We're not doing. A, we're here to wrestle. And that is why earlier today I talked to United States and World Heavyweight Champion Booker T and I told him, you're either going to defend both of those titles or you're going to give one up right now. And that's. Booker, you want to expect Booker T would have defended both, but I told him you'd have to defend him every night, and I gave him a choice: relinquish the United States Championship and go on and defend the world title, and, or to defend the United States and relinquish the world. And Booker T is a lot of things, but he's not a dumb man, and that is why starting. Or as of right now, Booker T is no longer the United States Champion. And over the next couple weeks, heading to Slambury, we will have a United States Tournament, United States Championship Tournament to determine the new champion. And that is when Jeff Jarrett comes out and says, Bischoff, Bischoff, Bischoff. You don't need no tournament. It's a foregone conclusion that Double J is going to walk out with that United States Championship at Flamboree. So why don't you just hand over the title, 
and we can all go and have a drink and leave this golf forsaken place. And Bischoff cuts him up and says, you know what? Years ago, you might have gotten what you just asked for. But, tonight, you have a match, and your match is first in this tournament, and it's right now. And a 54 C minus, AJ Styles defeats Jeff Jarrett in 9 minutes by pinfall at the roll up. Jeff Jarrett had a 69, AJ Styles had a 41. Then after the match, Jeff Jarrett pissed off that he just lost and he's not getting that title shot. Picks up his guitar and does what he's done his entire career and just smashes it over the head of AJ Styles and leaves him laying there. And walks out with that broken guitar piece. So, AJ Styles moves on, but will he be able to actually move on? Or did that guitar shot just cost AJ Styles a chance at the United States Championship? We then having another United States Championship match. And a 67C plus Billy Kidman defeats Lance Storm in 9 minutes by pinfall at the Shooting Star Press. This is when he could do it, but without hurting everyone. Kidman had a 57 and Storm had a 60. Good match. Anyone improving? Billy Kidman advances in the tournament and who will he face? But, and then in 86B+, plus, we get a video promoting Sting, the icon, the heart of WCW. And then in a 54C-, minus, Fit Finley defeats Jim Duggan in 9 minutes after using ropes for leverage. Line of pinfall. Finley had a 49, Duggan had a 46, good batch. A decent mid card match, no improvements. And then 90A Booker T's backstage coming to the ring when Scott Steiner just attacks him and just beats the living shit out of him. Hits him with that belly to belly suplex on the floor, rolls him over, and gets him in that Steiner recliner and just doesn't let go until he's forced off. And Booker T's just laying there, hurt. Scott Steiner says, listen up, that title is coming back to Big Papa Pump, believe it. And then in a 45D, not that decent reaction to the crowd, but so far, Alex Wright defeats Jamie Noble in five and a half minutes by pinfall, and it brought the, mat, the crowd back down, needed to bring him down, we'll ring him down. Anyone improving? Nope. And then, in 81B, Eric Bischoff comes out and he's holding the World Heavyweight Championship. And he says, ladies and gentlemen, because of Scott Steiner's attack earlier, Booker T will not be able to defend the championship within the next 30 days. And before that, before this WCW, before now, we would have just let him hold it. But this is about competition. This is about who's the best man. And that's why w Eric Bischoff, myself, and WCW officials have decided that we're going to strip Booker T of the World Heavyweight Championship. And... At Slamboree, we will have a match to determine the man who is going to, and when he says man, out comes the nature boy, Ric Flair. That says, Bishop, you've had a long history. There's one thing that you can admit, is that when you're looking for the man, you're looking for Ric Flair. It doesn't matter who you had in mind, because the nature boy wants to hold that again. So, as I have said a million times, to be the man, you gotta beat the man. And that's why I want that belt bitch off. And out comes Scott Steiner. And it says, 
Settle down, old man. The only reason you could even fathom getting a shot at that world title is because I laid out Booker T. Because I destroyed Booker T. And Scott Steiner, Big Papa Pump, is going to be the next world champion. That's when Eric Bischoff interrupts and says, You know what? You're both main event talents. You're both former world champions. And whether they like you or not, you get a reaction out of these people. That is why I'm making an official right now at Slambury. It's going to be Ric Flair versus Scott Steiner. Versus Diamond Dallas Page versus Sting for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship in a four way elimination match. And Ric Flair and Scott Sonner are getting each other's faces. I don't know, Chris was like, and I want to start fighting now because later tonight it's going to be you two. Against Diamond Dallas Page and Sting. And then in a 60 C minus and a decent match, in a triple threat match for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship, we have a newly remasked Rey Mysterio. Yes, I did pull the WWE and remasked them. Anyway, debuting Raw Van Dam facing Shane Helms, the current champion for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. Apparently, Rob Van Dam's too heavy for it, so I'm going to have to change everything I just said. But in a decent match, Rey Mysterio defeats Shane Helms and Rob Van Dam in 14 minutes. And Rey Mysterio defeats Shane Helms by pinfall with the springboard Hurricane He carried the match. So, Van Dam's not a Cruiserweight, which I thought he could be. Hmm. Huh. We'll change it. We'll change that. Anyone improving? No improvements. Alright. And then, out comes Kevin Nash. And Nash says, you know, I've been a part of every big movement in this business so far. There wouldn't be an Attitude Era without me. There wouldn't be a and uh, there wouldn't have been the NWO without me. There wouldn't be a WCW without me. But I can stand here and admit that WCW almost failed because of me. But, this is a new WCW, and I am here to prove that Kevin Nash is still at the top of the food chain. That there is nobody better and then out comes Canyon. And Canyon gets right in Nash's face and says, You know what? You're going to say there's no one better? The question is, the question isn't who's better than Kevin Nash. It's who better than Canyon. And it sure as hell ain't you. And Canyon pushes the microphone into Kevin Nash and leaves the ring. And Nash is just sitting there, just on cross. Shaking his head, alright? Alright! And then in an ADB in our main event, about that fantastic heat and great wrestling, DDP and Sting defeat Ric Flair and Scott Steiner in 16 minutes when DDP defeats Scott Steiner by pinfall with a diamond cutter. Scott Steiner had an 80, Ric Flair had a 70. Sting had an 81, and Diamond Dallas Page had a 73. No improvements. And then, in a 92A, with Ric Flair on the outside of the ring, Scott Steiner still in the middle of the ring, Diamond Dallas Page and Sting lock eyes and stare each other down. Heading into Slambury. And we got an 81B in an increased our popularity in 45 regions. We're on our way, boys. But 
as always, I'll see you guys right after this cut to go over what's next. And we are back, and we're going to close that raw last night. Third angle. Really stuck gold with that show. What did Raw do? 85. Yeah. Big Show versus The Undertaker. Great Angle versus Bradshaw. Alright. Okay. Alright. A brawl with The Undertaker and Triple H. Okay. Okay. We got a 3.8 TV, what did they get? A 22. Yeah! Let's go here first. Easy money. I don't give a crap. No, uh, Kurt Henning, Kurt Henning. They're bottling it out. Um, let, let's just, I wanted Mr. Perfect. You rival offer. They're paying him 25. What did I offer? 17. Oh, we're going to withdraw. Sorry. Nitro rating, 3.8. Shane Elms doesn't connect with the fans. What are you kidding? He sings and dances. Probably write the kid off. Contract negotiations with CM Punk. He's going to go to the power plant. And we're trying to get Nathan Jones, too. Alright, so. We're going to go to our creative meeting. I'm going to show you guys the best that we have. The usual suspects, the big five. Next big things, though, are AJ Styles, Evan Courageous, and Agia. I can't say that. But, well, he's only 23. 21, alright. Uh, prospects, AJ Styles, Evan Kaz, Air Paris, and Shannon Moore. Off the top, what do you think? Rick Flair, the American Dream, that's the road, baby. Kevin Nash, Don Dallas Page, and Sting. Ring generals are Rick Flair, Ray Mysterio, Matt Storm, Fitz Millie, and Sting. Who's hot? And who's not? And time decline. Forty-five are on the show on his age. Five years, five years, few years. Okay, all right. So first thing we gotta do is our titles. We got Shane Helms. That's gonna change. We're gonna replace Shane Helms with Rey Mysterio because he has to be uh, supposed to be four. Close. Would you like to be no? Bro. Ray Mysterio. I'm gonna modify this title. Let's see what uh wait wait. What what is Rob Vandale? Middleweight. Side to side. Yep. One to three months he'll be able to. Alright. That's all we need. That is all we need. And then we're going to go to medical and show you how half our freaking roster is hurt. Damn it, Booker T was legitimately hurt. And I had a strip in the title. Brian Adams and Brian Clark. Chronic, both hurt. Sid Vicious. He's probably never going to wrestle again. And Vampira. And then, last thing we're going to show you is two things. WWF first, and then our power plant. Oh, we're going to show our power plant first. Our power plant roster is Adam Pierce, Lexus Lare, Allison Danger, Amber O'Neill, Andy Douglas, Beth Phoenix, Bob Orton Jr., Bonnie Maxson, Brian Danielson, Chase Stevens, Chris Harris, Chris Saban, C. M. Punk, Colt Cabana, 
Boom, boom, good boom. David Flair, Frankie Kazarian, Jack Evans, who wasn't it him who just had the seizure in the middle of the ring? Ugh. James Storm, a referee, Jay Briscoe, Jerry Jarrett is our booker, Jerry Lawler is our owner. Kristen, Lacey, Mark Briscoe, another referee, Matt Seidel, Nikki Rocks, Randy Orton. We scooped up Randy Orton, Roderick Strong, Steve Carino, and Tom Pritchard. We scooped him up too. And then we're going to go to the WWF. Now I'm going to show you the titles. Matt Hardy. Rhino. Triple H. Kurt Angle still the king of the ring. That hasn't happened yet. Gary Lynn. China. Stone Cold Steve Austin. And the two man power trip. Right before. Uh, Triple H hurts himself I believe. But anyway, I think that might be it. So. I did want a WCW match on myself. But anyway, that might be it. So, like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next. Peace.